coming to you live from Bayelsa State, where the uh, Investment and Economic Forum is scheduled to hold. The theme for this one, uh, as you can see here, if you just look to my right, unlocking Bayelsa State's economic potentials, opportunities, and challenges. We're joined this morning by the Commissioner for Works, Mr. Lawrence Irujapo. Morning, thank you for coming on. The Good morning, call. thank you. Well, speaking about uh, investment, uh, let's take it from your perspective, works. How is this connected with investment? You see, the issue is that uh, you must know that um, you cannot start a process if there is no beginning. You have to have a foundation. And uh, there is a synonymous, there's a synonymism between uh, development and infrastructure and investment. If you must have investment, you must have the basic infrastructure for you to invest. For example, if you don't have good roads, you don't have uh, means of communication, and then you don't also have uh, good uh, uh, electricity, you don't also have uh, water, you don't have uh, 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 what I would call uh, the conducive environment for a uh, link and for the transportation of uh, goods and services. Definitely investment and not strike. So for example, it takes you about two, three hours to get from Potakot to Yenegua. How will that be an invest, investment, uh, investor-friendly environment? So, for example, you need an airport. And what, once you get an airport, it makes it easier for those who want to fly into Bayelsa to do business to get that. So investments and uh, development of infrastructure, to me, they are seismic with that I could join. And you cannot do one without the other. So there will always be infrastructural development for us to have a very conducive investment uh, environment. How challenging has it been? Because, I mean, yes, we do hear that all the time, that the terrain here is quite different. And so what goes in? to putting up an infrastructure almost two, three times what could go in in other terrain. So how have you been able to cope with that? You see, the issue is that if a blind man tells you that I want to stone you, you know you already has the stone in the sand. Otherwise, he won't tell you that. We already know the challenges of our environment. And so we've been able to uh, provide solutions. For example, we know that uh, we have a difficult terrain. And so, for example, if you want to do a one kilometer road, what it will cost you to do one kilometer road? You used to do about two, three kilometers of road in Delta State. That is because for, you have to excavate about, but in some cases, two meters underground to remove the unsuitable material, then you sand fill. Now, we know that if we were to use the ordinary laterite to sand fill, that would be a challenge. So we'll be able to do that now. We have to sand fill, and sand is a little bit more easy for us to use here than for us to get a, a red laterite from uh, Potakot or any nearby state. So we have been able to develop that thick skin. So what we've been able to do over the years is to look at what can we use. And so we are using things like the cement, the sand, to make sure we prepare a very good ground, and then we put sand cement, we put stone base, to make sure that whatever we do is consolidated. So unlike the stages we pass through in other areas, we make sure that what we have, the difficult terrain we have, does not just translate into complaints. Because the, the idea will have been, okay, let us sit down, because if got this terrain is difficult, we can't do anything. I think that would be a lazy man's attitude towards life. It's a terrain we have been born into, and we must do everything to overcome it. So, uh, with the coming of uh, His Excellency Governor, uh, uh, Honorable Terence Raka Dixon, we've been able to articulate our plan. And that's why I started by saying that before a blind man tells you, I want to stone you, he has already planned on what to do. So, we have articulated what do we need to do. The first thing is we need to achieve getting ourselves to link the three central districts. And so we need a road from here to Brass, we need a road from here to Puruma, we need a road from here to Ikerimo. And as I speak with you, these three routes are going on simultaneously. Now we also need an airport for us to be able to attract investment and be seen as being serious and being ready for tourism and investment because the policy trust of the governor is to look beyond oil. And even if you have to look into agriculture, you also need some basic infrastructure for you to evacuate whatever agricultural products you may have got. So we've looked at this and so we plan our strategies and so we are taking the long term short term and medium term programs as we go on so the first medium term programs a long term short term program is keep you there, make it a modern city that somebody comes in you see that yes you yeah, get driving to a modern city before this now we're just like a rat that has only one hole and you know when a rat has only one hole it doesn't live long so we'll be able to think okay let us open other entrance into bias into Yenegua. so as i speak with you we are constructing an outer ring road that's about uh, 48 kilometers 25 kilometers from Big Bogene to AIT, Sami Abasha, and under 22 kilometers from uh, Glory Drive up to Gomez House uh, Gate. In fact, where we are seated, if behind us here, there is a bridge crossing the river, a pier, to link that uh, Glory Drive, Gomez House route. So, that's, so we're looking at it from the point of view that we have this difficult terrain, but we must not sleep and lose over that. We must take steps to ensure that we conquer the terrain. And that is the only thing you can do. And being an Asian man who are resilient, we are always able to conquer.
I think it looks like, uh, I think 18 years now uh, the state has been in existence. And you, you talked about airport. Yesterday we, we, we saw the governor talk about uh, uh, the airport, the need for the state to have its own airport. And now you're also telling us about the essence of uh, the link road, because once Bayasa had just one major road linking all parts. Tell us more on the airport uh, uh, infrastructure, which he says, uh, or which he has promised that it will come into being uh, before the end of next year. What do you have in, uh, on ground uh, towards achieving that? Well, as I speak with you, uh, we have achieved about 75% uh, of something. Like I said earlier, every construction work here, you must start with something. It's not like somebody who wants to begin a prayer, you must always refer to the, uh, to the, to the, to the author and the mediator of Christ. So we begin with sand. So we, we have achieved about 75% uh, of sand fill now. By the end of uh, August, we'll have completed sand filling. And once we finish sand filling, as I speak with you, what we call the vertical drains are also going along with it. Because the essence of the vertical drain is to shorten the period that the sun will have needed to consolidate. Because ordinarily, if we were to sand fill the normal sand fill, it would take us two years before we can ordinarily work on that uh, runway. But what we are doing now is do the sand filling and do a vertical drain. So the vertical drain helps the run uh, the sand to consolidate. So in five months, what we'll have done in two years, we do that in five months. And that is part of the issue of doing the environment and trying to overcome the environment. Now, once we finish that, by the end of September, we'll start the main civil works. The main civil works on the runway will begin with, we'll now do the sand cement, do our stone base, and put the asphalt. So the target is that by October 2015, we should be able to land the first plane here because we are taking up the federal government is handling the aspect of the terminal building, and that is being handled by a company called uh, CCECC. And they are also going very fast. Uh, while our own company, which is the runway and the navigational equipment, the car park and the access road, is being handled by Dantata and Sawo. And Dantata and Sawo has a history of having developed some airports. Uh, for example, they developed the, the Jigawa Airport, which uh, recently people who flew in there told us is one of the best in the country. They also did the one in uh, Kedi. And they also done the one at Obanaja, the, the uh, one that uh, Dangote is using. And they also did that. So based on that history, and also trying to see how, haven't seen their, their, their profile. So that's where we are with the airport. So on, for the airport, we are on course because we have timelines. And we are, we, each, each week, we also try to go out to see what our contractors are doing. So last week, I was at the site myself. And I said we are about 75% in the sample. So for us, delivering that is not just a necessity. It's not a necessity. It's not a luxury. Because like the governor stated, the Bayasa airport is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Well, is yeah, just, you know, yeah. May I come in here? Yeah. That's like, it just says, I was just about to ask you that, because the criticism that trails a lot of states that want to own airports is that you don't really have to, that you, know, you could have made use of the airport in neighboring states. For instance, you neighbored by Delta and, uh, and uh, River State who have functional airports, as it were. You don't think that there's any way these airports could have served you? Well, uh, uh, Mark, I just want to say this. If the fact that your senior brother has children, does it mean that you don't have children? Because the issue of having children is a different thing entirely, because you have somebody that will inherit you. That is a little bit uh, 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 issue of morality. But in terms of business, you came into Yenegua uh, yesterday or today, I don't know when you came in, but it took you about two or three hours to come here. And especially if you have an unfortunate day and the Indian market is locked, and you can't come in for, sometimes people stay there for about five, six hours. Do you think that would be a, an attractive thing for an investor to come to a state, or even a tourist who want to come and serve all our beautiful beaches, our beautiful environment? You, you, you agree with me, that cannot encourage them. So the need for an airport is not a luxury, but a necessity because Bayasa is the hub of the Niger Delta and the hub of the Gulf of Guinea. So most of the oil companies, one of the reasons why they say they don't have the headquarters here is that they don't have an airport. And so if you say you cannot, you cannot you continue to keep your, uh, your headquarters in Lagos, keep them maybe in Abuja because you don't have an airport. It becomes necessary that we should have that airport, not only for purposes of bringing those multinationals to come and stay here, but for us to be able to interact with the Gulf of Guinea because the Gulf of Guinea is closer to every other place from Bayelsa here. Then secondly, we are an agrarian state. And you don't expect us to transport our goods and services from here to Potakot. In any case, the Potakot airport is not a cargo airport. What we are building here is a cargo airport. And because of our emphasis on agriculture and our emphasis on tourism, I think it will be foolhardy for us to allow us to drive from here to Wari or Asaba 
before those who are coming to see the beauty invest in Bayasa should take investment. But one other thing that is very clear is that the means of transportation, the means of communication are things that facilitate and promote investment. And we know that one of the things, the easiest means of transport, now that we don't have a very effective rail, rail system, is the, air, is the air. Because all over the world, the most effective is the rail system. Especially when you have a, a, the tube system. After that, you have the air. And so with that cargo airport, we believe that we will not only be, to be tapping into the Gulf of Guinea environment, we'll also be linking the, uh, the, 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 the southeast. For example, in the whole of the southeast, we have a corridor that links us to the southeast from uh, an area we call Illimibri and Asamabri. And because of the airport we are building, the government is also going to, we are going to soon award a contract that will take a road straight to Illimibri and will link us to Anisha, because from Illimibri to Anisha, it's just a, a few minutes drive. And then going forward from there, we are going to get, develop a light rail that will link us to the southeast.